Hello, everyone. Welcome. My name is Kimberly. I am the CASP office manager. Uh, my pronouns are they, them, theirs. And I'm just going to be doing a very quick tutorial on our new timekeeping system known as EgoTime. Um, as you all may have been aware, we are going to be transitioning out of my time and using a new uh, timekeeping system known as EgoTime. As you can tell on our Blink page, it is being highlighted at the moment. Um, I'm just going to be doing a very brief tutorial on how to input your hours and where to access EcoTime and how to log in and all of that. If you have any specific questions about your current employee profile or anything of the sort, please feel free to reach out to our SRS business office um, via email to srsbusiness at ucsd.edu. Um, if you need any more information in regards to how to log into EcoTime or you just want a more hands-on tutorial, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I'll have my contact information at the end of the video. Um, but other than that, let's get started. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to go into your preferred web browser. I am using Google Chrome. And as you can see, I've already logged into Blink, which is our business link page for UC San Diego. Um, and what I'm going to be doing is on the top part of Blink, you can see there's multiple tabs um, that staff and faculty have access to. And we're currently going to be looking under the personal tools tab. When you click on the personal tools tab, you'll see a drop down list or you'll a uh, drop down list will appear um, for you all to access. It'll have things such as at your service, um, eco time and your UC learning and what used to be our my time online timekeeping system. Um, but now we're going to be using EcoTime. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to click on the EcoTime campus. It's going to redirect you to do your single sign on login. Um, for the majority of you all, it'll most likely be with your UCSD email um, that you would use to log into my time previously. So that should all stay the same. You'll click login. It'll ask you to do authentic authentication with Duo. Um, if you haven't logged in for the day or for the week, it'll just tell you to make sure you do those two-step login. Um, next, it'll take you to the EcoTime homepage. Um, the first thing that it'll redirect you to is your messages tab. This is a general message that was sent by the EcoTime and UC San Diego team. Um, take a minute to read through it again because we're part of wave one and wave two. We should now have access to log into um, EcoTime. If for some reason you still don't have access to EcoTime, please reach out to our SRS business office so that they can see what's going on with your profile. But all of you all should now be able to log in and it should take you to this general homepage. What we're going to be going over is mostly underneath your employee tasks. Um, which if we click on the left hand corner um, where the different subcategories are, we'll click on where it says employee tasks and we'll see that three different sections show up for us. The first one being your timesheet, your balances, and your time off requests. The one that we're going to be focusing on is your timesheets. So when you click on your timesheets, it's going to redirect you to this general setup. Um, Again, it's going to be organized according to the current pay period that we're in, which would be the April 19 to May 2nd pay period. But if you were to go down the drop list menu, you can see that the future, the two future pay periods are already showing up for us. So on the top left hand side, you'll see the drop down list to select the pay period. Um, on the right hand side, you'll see a series of buttons that are a little retro, um, in my opinion, um, as to different actions that you can do um, to your timesheet. The first button being your save button, your reset button, your view or add notes, your retrieve previous tasks, your save and submit or complete button, your calculate timesheet, your view balances, your timesheet action audit, and your print timesheet. Again, the ones that you all will most likely be using are your, are your save button and your complete button. And then in the middle area of the screen, you'll see your timesheet summary. So what you'll see is your name, your employee ID, and a lot of information in regards to who your current employer is. For me, my home department is CASP. 
So it'll show me that um, because I'm a professional staff, it'll have some additional information that it won't be the same for you all. Um, but this is where your general employee information will be. Right underneath that, it'll show you your timesheet summary, which includes the two weeks of this pay period and your scheduled hours um, for that. The majority of you all will see this specific section left blank, um, but because I have the set schedule that I have to work with, this is already auto-completed for me. Um, since you all will be claiming positive hours, meaning that you're going to be including hours worked, um, this will be left blank and you just have to create these shifts for yourself. Right underneath that, it'll show you the scheduled shift or the actual times that you have clocked in for whatever day is highlighted. So if I were to click on Sunday, you'll see that it doesn't show me that section um, because it doesn't have any hours claimed for that. But if I were to select Friday, it'll show me again, this is the scheduled shift that I have for myself um, and this is the actual time in and out. Um, some of you all may not even have this section at all. It just depends on who your different home departments are and what your set work schedules will look like. And then right underneath that, we'll have a page where you're able to submit the hours worked for certain days. So let's say, for example, you wanted to input hours that you're planning on working for Saturday, April 25th. What you would do is that you would click on the day so that it's highlighted on your timesheet summary and go down to where it says hours worked on Saturday, April 25th. What you would then do is you would submit the hours or the time that you're going to be clocked in and clocked out. This is different from my time because in my time, all you had to do was submit the total amount of hours that you were going to work, period. You didn't have to be very specific in regards to when you were going to be working or starting and when you were going to be um, ending or finishing your shift. Um, but for eco time, you do have to do that. So let's say, for example, you have a four hour shift that you're going to be working from uh, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. What you would do is that you would put in your time in. So for my time in, I'm starting at 10 a.m. And my time out is I'm ending at 2 p.m. Now, one thing to keep in note of is that the system will automatically default any times to a.m. So just make sure that if you're working a.m. to p.m., you change that so that you're not claiming 16 hours of work and rather you're claiming four hours of work, which is what you all are actually working. Um, the meal break is for when any of you are working long shifts or if depending on whatever um, additional hours you're working with um, for whatever home department you're in. Um, if they tell you that you need to take a 15 or 30 minute break, um, you claim that just so that your hours worked are reflected appropriately. So if within those four hours that I was working from 10 to two, I took a 30 minute break, I have to make sure to claim those 30 minutes so that it technically only has me um, officially working for 3.5 hours. Um, the majority of you all probably won't have to claim this, um, so you would just put your meal break as zero so that you can claim the four hours straight. So this would be your time and your time out, your duration and your meal break. And the next part, which is probably the most important part, is your appointment and pay code. So one big difference between Ecotime and my time is that Ecotime does not separate your jobs to different calendars or sections. What you have to do is you have to go in there and select the appointment that you want to claim for certain hours. So let's say, for example, you have multiple jobs and you either have multiple jobs within the same department. So you're an OLC mentor and you're also a CPL or you work with different departments. So if you have one job with CASP and then you want to have one job with Oasis or with Undock or any other department on campus, you want to make sure that you're selecting the proper appointment so that the proper department gets charged for the hours that you're claiming. Um, just again, we want to make sure that whatever hours you all are claiming for CAS get charged to us and whichever hours you're working for another department get charged to them. So just to make sure our finances are all um, checked and in order. So because I am a professional staff, the only appointment that shows up for me is my current job with CASP. Um, so the only, I only have one option, but if I were a student staff member and I had multiple jobs, I would have to pick between multiple appointments in here. Um, so I'm going to be inputting the appointment that's 
going to be claiming those hours. And then right below the appointment, you'll see that you have the option to select a pay code, which is where you would put in your hours worked. Um, the reason why you say the on-call or called back worked is mostly for the um, UC San Diego Health Department because they're considered to be on call or um, called back to work um, because even though they might not be actively working, um, they can still claim those hours um, for different things. So you all will just be focusing on the hours worked tab. Um, so once you've created the shift that you wanted, you're working from 10 to 2 for four hours total under the correct appointment. Um, and these are the hours that I'm working. You would then go to our top right hand corner and we'll visit all of the buttons that we have on the right hand side. The first button from left to right would be the save button. Um, so what you want to do is you want to click on that. It's a little floppy disk. It'll take some time to reload and then we'll see that our Saturday um, shift on April 25th is now been added to our regular timesheet and it's claiming all our hours accordingly. Um, so let's say, for example, you had scheduled to work that shift and it turns out that you are no longer going to be working that shift because you had to cancel it for some reason. Um, what you'll notice is that now that you go down to your worked hours um, summary for the day, you have a new column that shows up called delete. So if at any point you need to delete a shift, all you have to do is check mark the correct shift that you're trying to claim and then press the delete button. Then it'll take some time to reload. And then after that, you'll see that those four hours that we claimed have disappeared. Again, really important to always save your work um, just to make sure that any hours that you have inputted are saved appropriately or any hours that you have to delete are deleted appropriately so that you don't get um, overpaid for hours that you didn't work. So that is your um, access to your timesheets. As you can see, you can select multiple pay periods um, and for future and or past pay periods, as you can see, the ones for the next pay period are empty, um, but those get updated on the regular. So this is what most likely your timesheets will look like um, once you log in. So if you go back to the employee tasks section, right next to timesheets, we have something called balances. Um, this is for any students that maybe work full time over the summer and they were eligible to um, collect some sick time. Your sick time balances will start to reflect here. If you see that the balances shown are not accurate, um, please contact the SRS business office um, so that they can check and see why your time isn't or your accrued balances aren't accurate. And then the next section would be your time off requests. Again, depending on who your supervisor is, you might not be using this section at all. Um, but if for some reason you have to claim sick time because you have a set schedule with an employer, um, this would be a cool tool to use. But again, depending on your, who your supervisor is, you might not need to use it and or it might not be relevant to any of your student staff positions. Um, so this is all for your employee tasks. The next tab that you should have access to would be your messages. And again, that's where we found our welcome message. Um, the next one that you should have access to is your history. So this is where you should be able to see the history of all of your previous timesheets. Again, because this is our first system um, or our first pay period in the system, we don't really have anything showing up here. So you won't be able to see any of your previous timesheets. Um, but you can view them here as well as in your employee task and your time your timesheet, you can select previous pay periods as well. And then lastly, would be the log off button. So once you're done updating your hours and everything's good to go, you can just go ahead and log off. It'll tell you that your session has been terminated and then the um, web browser will automatically um, update and take you back to the Blink homepage. Uh, but yeah, that is all for EcoTime. Again, you can find it underneath your personal tools. EcoTime Campus, log in to do, 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 with your UCSD single sign-on, do your dual authentication, and we're back. Well, I hope this was helpful to you all. Again, this will be our first run with EcoTime. So if you come across any issues or concerns, or you see that your profile isn't updated correctly, uh, please let us know so that we can make sure to get 
um, that updated as soon as possible. Um, as a reminder, your first eco time uh, timesheet will be due on Friday, May 1st, which is two weeks from today. And just as long as you're updating all of your hours and you're saving them accurately, um, you should be able to complete your timesheet uh, by May 2nd. But again, if you have any issues with your profile, please feel free to let us know. Um, if you want to contact the SRS Business Office, their email is srsbusiness at ucc.edu. Or if you want to have a more detailed rundown of EcoTime and logging in your hours, you can feel free to reach out to me. Again, my name is Kimberly, and my email is ksr002 at ucc.edu. Uh, but I hope this was helpful. Um, and again, I hope you have a great day, and we'll be chatting real soon.